Hey everyone, it's Sagan. Today, we're going to discuss the Season 3 development plans revealed by Bugang Kim, the new director of Guardian Tales, during the Season 3 Tuning Up event at the two-part 2024 fest held on March 23rd in Korea. The primary objectives for Guardian Tales Season 3 include enhancements to the lobby, user interface, content, and collection and growth aspects. The current lobby, mainly composed of buildings, often feels stagnant, leaving players with little to do after finishing the story. The objective for the revamped lobby is to create a dynamic space where players can continually engage, display achievements, and discover new content. After completing World 18, Heavenhold will transform into a new setting where guardians can construct buildings and explore different activities. Additionally, the updated lobby will include unexplored areas that will expand with the introduction of each new world. In the lobby, Guardians can add monuments alongside basic residential buildings to commemorate major in-game achievements. These monuments represent accomplishments like reaching 100% completion in a world or conquering the toughest co-op expedition level, enhancing gameplay satisfaction by acknowledging progress. Acknowledging the lobby's shared nature, they created a dedicated area within the profile page for showcasing achievements. Here, Guardians can customize their profiles with stickers earned from in-game feats, encouraging personal expression and fostering interaction among Guardians. The second major update concerns the UI, which is undergoing a complete overhaul with innovative enhancements. The goal is to refine the design of Guardian Tales, making it more streamlined and sophisticated, while also introducing new features and enhancements to improve convenience. In a significant overhaul, the lobby, which serves as the primary screen of the game, is undergoing restructuring. To enhance user experience, core buttons are being relocated, with less frequently used options moved to menus, ensuring that essential functions remain easily accessible and prominent on the main screen. A notable UI addition is the content book, serving as a hub for all in-game activities. Within the recommended section, players can access story content and activities with available tickets or rewards. This centralized feature streamlines task discovery for players, offering a more efficient and user-friendly experience. In Season 3, Guardian Tales introduces several highly anticipated upgrades, with the preset system standing out as the most notable. Previously challenging to adjust, this system will undergo significant improvements. Instead of being limited to just eight shared parties, numerous presets will be available for each content type. Additionally, players will have the option to duplicate existing presets, reducing potential inconvenience. Ongoing feedback from Guardians will continue to shape UI enhancements even after the Season 3 launch. Moving on, addressing content is crucial. The main aim is to fill the space between story content updates by introducing captivating activities for Guardians. To accomplish this, the development focuses on two key goals. Firstly, to introduce two fundamental permanent content expansions. And secondly, to create a world content cycle utilizing these expansions. The initial focus is on the co-op expedition, which has completed its beta testing phase. This challenging content demands collaboration and direct engagement from Guardians. They are gearing up for a second beta test, addressing shortcomings from the initial phase and refining matchmaking convenience and rewards based on feedback. In the standard mode, the difficulty levels and stage patterns have been revamped to enhance the role-playing experience. The second major feature is a new single-player mode called Teddy's Hero War, which highlights the diverse abilities of various heroes in dynamic battles. Beta testing for this mode is underway, albeit with a slight delay. In an effort to enhance player engagement, the developers have experimented with incorporating roguelike elements into Guardian Tales. Despite encountering challenges along the way, they are committed to refining and improving the gameplay experience. In Teddy's Hero War, players construct a deck of eight heroes and strategically deploy them to clear stages. Similar to Co-op Expedition, this mode presents storylines related to different heroes. During battles, players can summon heroes and manually utilize their skills and combos, requiring strategic planning due to summoning limitations. Completion of stages rewards random items, akin to Kama Zone, facilitating progress to subsequent stages. The gameplay loop is designed to be low pressure, allowing players to sweep through stages after initial completion. Periodic rewards based on achievement scores encourage self-improvement and experimentation with new strategies. Beta testing will continue until the release of Season 3. 
Additionally, growth resources obtained from World Exploration and Comma Zone, which will be temporarily closed during the Teddy's Hero War beta, will be available in this mode. The two main features will be officially launched with Season 3, removing the beta label. Moreover, World 19 and the redesigned lobby will be introduced as the focal points of Season 3. There will be a reduction in the overall scale and available resources in the world, but efforts will be made to lessen the burden on Guardians, while enhancing the joy of discovering hidden elements. Although specific details are still under wraps, Season 3 pledges to offer brighter environments reminiscent of those in Season 1 worlds, beginning with a lighter tone. Each month, World 19 will initiate the cycle, followed by co-op expedition stages and Teddy's Hero War story updates in the succeeding months. The last month will introduce the World Achievement System, granting rewards based on accomplishments across these three elements. This monthly rotation seeks to offer regular and exciting challenges. Moreover, Nightmare and Short Stories will be periodically added to complement permanent content. There are also plans to gradually introduce Hell Mode from World 1 onwards, aiming for a stable four-month cycle once new developments are finalized. Next up is Collection and Growth. The main goal here is to speed up collecting items and leveling up, while also making new heroes more valuable. Additionally, they aim to increase the growth limit for specific improvements. Guardian Tales recognizes the widening gap between longtime players and newcomers due to the game's prolonged service. To address this, they're removing growth constraints on existing heroes and increasing resources needed for basic growth. This, alongside improved event and shop item efficiency, aims to enhance the collection experience for all players. However, they're mindful of potential currency inflation and are introducing new currencies for optional growth to maintain game sustainability. Players can collect existing heroes for the Rift or new heroes for Tetris Hero War with initial distribution of new growth currencies and the option to convert them to existing inflated currencies. Changes have been implemented in the summoning system to simplify the process of collecting and growing heroes. The previous rotation system was causing delays due to the increasing number of heroes. In Season 3, rotation pickups are being replaced with selective pickups, allowing Guardians to choose their desired hero and weapon, reducing stress over unwanted items. However, New heroes won't be immediately available in selective pickups and won't be purchasable from the mileage shop until a certain period has passed. Following the update, new heroes will be accessible through new pickup summons for a limited period, with lower gem consumption limits introduced to prevent excessive spending. While new heroes won't be immediately purchasable, growth resources can be efficiently purchased using the mileage system. In terms of selective growth, three new types of growth will be introduced. Firstly, Guardians can boost their heroes' basic stats by granting blessings through the Teddy's Hero War across three stages using newly acquired resources. This will prioritize the development of main heroes intended for challenging content. Next, exclusive equipment will undergo specialization similar to Limit Break, providing significant stat boosts and minor random options exclusively to their owners. This aims to enhance the value of each hero's exclusive gear. As the acquisition of exclusive equipment becomes easier through selective pickups, duplicate equipment can be continuously consumed. However, since these options are minor, they won't be obligatory, and they are developing them with a ceiling in mind. To simplify the hero and equipment upgrade process, growth stages have been streamlined. In Season 3, since the level increase based on worlds will be removed, these newly added growth elements will become the limit of hero growth throughout Season 3 and will not contribute to knowledge or collection bonuses. Therefore, players can proceed by selecting only the heroes they really need. Lastly, in co-op expeditions, Guardians can embed gems into artifacts for minor bonuses and resistances, gradually making challenges easier with more farming. This is intended as a form of growth that rewards players' efforts, rather than imposing excessive farming burdens. The farming difficulty will be adjusted so that diligent farmers can challenge the next season's cooperative expeditions more quickly and smoothly. Up to this point, Season 3 has brought about changes in the lobby, UI, content, collection, and growth aspects. As for PvP and guilds, significant enhancements are planned for later in 2024. Specifically, Season 3 specifications encompass PvP balance adjustments and improvements to guild raid bosses. Included in the Season 3 specifications are revisions to PvP balance and enhancements to guild raid bosses. More comprehensive details on these matters will be provided through upcoming announcements. 
However, there's an important update regarding PvP. The rotation rules for PvP matches are being altered. With the introduction of co-op expeditions, both co-op and co-op defense modes will be removed from the multiplayer rotation. Consequently, Arena and the official version of Deathmatch will alternate on a weekly basis. As Season 3 unfolds, modifications are planned for Deathmatch as it transitions to its official version. In Season 3, match count restrictions will be lifted and opening hours will be extended. To prevent match count from directly affecting scores, the trophy acquisition method will be changed. This adjustment will enable faster score accumulation at lower tiers, while introducing varying scores at higher tiers based on the difference in opponent scores. These changes aim to facilitate progression for all players while fostering intense competition among top-tier guardians. Similar scoring systems may be applied to the Colosseum or Arena following further enhancements. More changes are happening behind the scenes besides what's been mentioned here, with the dev team working hard to develop and test everything. While the plan suggests aiming for the second quarter, internally, the devs hope to finish everything by mid-May. Each member is focused on making Season 3 a success. To help pass the time until Season 3 arrives, the devs will run the second co-op expedition beta, release the Tetis Hero War beta, and organize existing content. Also, World 14 Demonshire Nightmare Mode will be unlocked. As Season 2 wraps up and Season 3 approaches with significant changes, the devs want to express gratitude to Guardians for their continued support. Despite some challenges as the new director, they appreciate the community's ongoing encouragement for their hard work. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.